this is a lecture that serves two different purposes. On the one hand, this is an introduction to Cornell Notes. That is the way that I would like for you to take notes on these videos when you watch them at home or if we have a lecture in class every now and then. And it is also then going to be a uh, grade for 1.7. So you'll probably need to end up watching this video twice. Now, when you take notes, on these videos that you're watching at home, I would like for you to have either a piece of paper or an iPad or some digital device like that, but maybe a paper that you can record what's going on to refer back to later. I think that this is so important that this is a grade. Once per chapter, I will come through and make sure that you have taken notes with greater and greater frequency to give you a chance to get used to the system and you need to do it in a pretty prescribed way. I'm not going to pour over your notes and look at exactly, but this is the broad format. And I've got some links to other people on the internet showing you different ways that they describe how it goes. So I'll have some variety in the different ways that it might be done. But broadly speaking, I want to walk through now Cornell notes with you. So what you're going to have is you're going to have, I'm going to assume piece of paper and you'll have to make the differences if you want to do this on your iPad. But the, the broad look of college ruled paper is that it's got these kind of margins like this and then it's got just tons and tons and tons of lines and there are also three holes punched maybe there, there, and there, something approximating that. Now this top line at the uh, bottom, at the top part of the page is something that we actually do care about. This is a useful feature. We're going to keep that one. But this other line over here near the, the holes on the left hand side of the page, not so helpful for us. So what you should do is you should take a ruler and you should lay the ruler over this side right there. This is uh, a way to sort of extend that boundary out. And then once you're there, draw a great, oops, not sorry, from there, draw a great big line down to towards the bottom of the page. And at the bottom of the page, you're going to want another great big line going all the way across like that. So the, the ruler can be used also then to help you sort of guide bar that one down there. Now these three different sections have different purposes. Broadly speaking, you can just continue to take notes like you've always done uh, over here. You're taking notes, you're writing things down, and maybe leave a little space between major headings. This is the spot that you're used to. At the top, you want to have your title, what it's about, and the date. When is this video happening? So you can maybe keep things in rough chronological order. But over here on the left, you need to be categorizing what's going on so that you've got this topic and then another topic and another topic. And within that here, you can have maybe some vocabulary words that you've got a certain term that happens here and then you would put the definition in the detailed notes over there. You might have something where there's a formula that you need to know and then you would have the formula itself be in the detailed notes over there. So this is the sort of broad layout where you take notes on the right and you categorize stuff, uh, put essential questions, topics, vocab uh, standouts, usually bold in our textbook, uh, on the, uh, the left. Now, at the bottom, this is the part that's going to come back in 1.7. In the textbook, he calls this the journal. Uh, uh, most people would just call that a summary. Now, in 1.7, uh, when that comes around after we're done with 1.6, I'm going to come around and we're going to have a day where we read these out to each other. And you need to, in this section, be thinking, how would I explain this to a five-year-old? How would I explain this 
page, this page to someone who's never seen this topic before, to someone with no knowledge of this topic. You need to uh, write stuff out in whole sentences and you need to really encapsulate everything. Encapsulate. So this, this is the spot where you're trying to boil down that day, that lecture, into a paragraph that really says what it's about and is rephrasing things in a common, ordinary language. Now, the great benefit to the Cornell note system here is that you will have a set of notes that you can refer back to to study for the test. As you get ready to study, you can just look down this left side over here, and if you get something, if, you, if you're able to recall covering up the right what the quadratic formula is, then just seeing that word quadratic formula is enough. Otherwise, if you see that and you don't remember what that particular formula for that particular section is, then you know that that's something that you need to make a flashcard or review a number of times. And then the summary at the bottom is a test for you to say, can I explain this to someone? There will be word problems, true false problems on every test that, and on some quizzes that are expecting you to be able to articulate what you have learned. If you can't explain it to someone else, how well did you really learn it? This is the, the Cornell note-taking system, and this is just a great way to keep your notes organized for any subject. But as I said, I will be uh, grading you on this uh, in 1.7. So if you're watching this now for the second time, it's 1.7, we've done with 1.6, then what's coming due the next uh, time we meet in class is me coming around and doing a notebook check and looking to say, do you have these notes here at the bottom of the page? Are they having articulate, full sentence, short paragraph, explanations of the material. Have you synthesized and summarized and journaled about the material? And if you need further explanation on that, look at 1.7 where he describes journaling. So, I'll see you in class. I hope you have a great day.